1939, Leo Zillard and Eugene Wigner wrote a letter to President Roosevelt warning him that the Germans may be working on nuclear weapons. They urged him to begin such research in the United States. Roosevelt began the Manhattan Project. Okay, before we build an atomic bomb, we need to get a critical amount of uranium to sustain a chain reaction to prove this whole concept is feasible. What isotope do you think we should use? Definitely U-235. Okay, we'll need to enrich some uranium so there's enough U-235 in it, and then we can make pellets out of it. But the neutrons might be too fast to sustain a chain reaction. So we can put graphite between the pellets so that it'll slow down the fast neutrons and the thermal neutrons, which should make them more likely to fission. And then we could add some cadmium-coated control rods for stability. Exactly. So what should we call this contraption that undergoes a nuclear reaction? Well, it reacts. So, a nuclear reactor. That's a terrible idea. But it is a pile of uranium and graphite, so let's call it a pile. That sounds good. The scientists began building the pile underneath the University of Chicago's football stadium which was unused following the 1939 cancellation of their football program. The scientists eagerly awaited the nuclear chain reaction to become critical. It did not because the graphite moderator was not sufficiently pure. Powering on in five, four, three, two, one. They tried again on December 2nd, 1942, and were very successful. The Chicago Pile 1 reactor became critical. The physicists were ecstatic and immediately reported the news to Washington using a coded language. The Italian navigator has landed in the New World. How are the natives? Very friendly. Good. This bass drum, Big Bertha, was stored under the University of Chicago Stadium during the Manhattan Project when the Chicago Pile 1 reactor came online. That's right, and because it was so close to the reactor, it may have been irradiated because it was not protected. Without shielding, neutrons escaped from the pile and bombarded nearby objects, including Big Bertha. The lead paint coating the drum may have absorbed enough neutrons to make it radioactive, potentially causing it to emit particles of its own. In 1955, the University of Texas Longhorn Band purchased the drum for $1 and some of the band members actually scraped the paint off as a precautionary measure. Today, Big Bertha continues to serve the Longhorn Band and is the last remaining witness of the Chicago Pile 1 reactor.